Welcome to our first ever Revzilla After Dark Live. This is a live production. And Pat, what are we talking about today? Today we are going to take a look at our top picks, Spurgeon and I's favorite helmets under the $300 price point. So if you're just starting out or if you're looking for a new lid for 2024, we have some options for you. Not just any best helmets, best full-faced street helmets under $300. We have got five picks. There's going to be a QR code on the screen right now. So everything that we're going to talk about today, you can click that little QR code for the best helmets under $300. It'll be our picks as well as pretty much every helmet that you can look at under $300 if you want to compare some other ones. And then we also have a QR code on there that you can click if you want to see our entire best of live. Yeah, and if you're curious how we came up with this list, Spurgeon and I have probably the most uh, experience out there Completely of having- Completely arbitrarily yeah. is the right answer. Yeah, of having helmets come across <laughs> our desk. We evaluate them, we give that information out to you on a weekly basis here at Revzilla. So we figured we'd curate that list, put it together and give you some options that might just be the next helmet for you. So without any further ado, keep in mind that uh, in the description, as soon as the live is done, we'll have links for all the helmets, we'll have links for all the content that we're discussing today, but I think it's time that we get into this. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm curious what you had picked because I know we got a couple that are surprises between the two of us, specifically with graphics. So I'm curious what you picked and I hope you like the picks that I made. The first helmet that we are going to start off with today for you is the Bell Qualifier DLX with MIPS. Now, Pat, how much does this helmet cost? This is a $290 helmet, and there is a version of this helmet that comes in south of the $200 price point, but at the $290 price point, you do get MIPS as well as the Pro Tint Shield included out of the box, which I do have here. So for those of you that are not familiar, the Pro Tint Shield is a transition lens shield. This is something that if you're riding in the sunshine, will go to a dark tint. If you're riding in the dark time, it will go to a light tint for you, like right now, yeah. after 7 p.m. on the Eastern Coast. Which is perfect for anybody who's commuting or if you're riding to work early in the morning, the sun hasn't come up yet, you can just toss this helmet, uh, this uh, face shield on the helmet. It'll be clear when you start, and then when you need it and the sun comes out, it'll be a little bit darker for you. So the reason that I picked this one for me personally is this is one of the most affordable helmets you can get MIPS in. If you're not familiar, um, MIPS is multi-impact shoot. Multi-directional impact protection yeah, system. You're close. Yeah, no, but multi, that's what threw me off. Multi multi-directional directional gets the hyphen. So mm -hmm. multi-directional impact protection system. I've said that enough in yeah. so many videos. M dips like, doesn't have the quite the ring to it. Yeah, when you're when you're live, you just can't make this stuff up. But MIPS is is basically to help counter rotational impact. I want to just take a pause because we got very excited. And we jump right into this. This is a live video, which means that the reason that Pat and I have our little computer screens on the table is that we're looking at the chat. So if you have questions as we're going through this, maybe you have a question on the Bell helmet. We can monitor this in live time. So, for example, uh, we have, uh, I don't, why is Pat the only one with a mic? Uh, I think that it's just that Pat's shirt might show the mic a little bit more, but I'm definitely wearing a mic too. It's camouflage. Yeah, right? I also enunciate a little bit better than my counterpart, Spurgeon. We had this discussion after the last attempt. Sally sells her seashells down by the seashore. I'm just checking to make sure that I still have a mic here. We're good. Um, so, Again, only Pat has a mic on. People, people, people. It's just camouflaged. Um, as far as the Bell helmet goes, do you have any dislikes with this helmet? I like the fact, again, multi-directional impact protection system for under $300. Mm -hmm. It is a very comfortable helmet. You get a pro tint shield and it's under $300. Yeah, I think the, the, only, the only negatives I have about this helmet is it's been out forever. I mean, this is a helmet that has probably been one of our best sellers for 10 years or so. Um, it's been out and it only meets ECE 2205, but I think that's more for the sake of the Bell, they're gonna update the helmet eventually, so they're probably waiting to do EC, ECE 2206 when it does come, but the MIPS already takes care of what ECE 2206 would need. So that's like, I think that would be probably my only negative about it. Okay, my only real dislike here is that the graphics are a bit dated. So I went with the Blitz graphic, which is bright, it's loud, but if you're looking at the graphics for this and you're someone that really values graphics on your helmet, this is one that's probably a bit dated in its approach. Yeah, I, I have a black and red bike, so I think the uh, I think this was the Razor graphic. I think it looks fantastic, um, but again, I'm biased based on my bike. Besides, we're talking about best motorcycle helmets under $300 here, so take the graphics out of it. This is going to be a great pick for you, but graphics, as you see while this video goes on, do come into play. So I'm going to jump back into the comments section as we get ready for our second pick and just see if we have any specific comments 
Ooh, Vladimir Putin rides a Grom. We're getting political. Really educational stuff here. Um, so I'm not seeing 5XL on any of today's helmets. I do not think we have a 5XL on any of today's helmets. No, no, there's not really, there's not too many brands coming out with a 5 extra large helmet. HAC? HAC is one of the few that come to mind. Yeah. Even they've been, you know, staying away from it. If you need a 5 extra large helmet, you're probably going to have brands that you know and are loyal to. The price is going to be what the price is, unfortunately, because they do have to recoup some of their money back with that very large shell that they're designing. You have a giant head, sir, <laughs> or ma'am, and that's okay. We're not here to judge. But I would say if you're looking at that list of best helmets under $300 that we're going to put in the description link at the end of the video, um, you're going to want to check out the HJC helmets on that list. That's probably going to be your best bet for finding a 5XL helmet. Great questions. Um, so apparently I don't need a mic. <laughs> I did just see that one yeah, as well. <laughs> so apparently I'm, I'm now too loud. So this is the beauty of doing it live. We have a whole crew where apparently I am overpowering the microphone. Who knows? Yeah. Um, Vicky Demonchild is here. Good to see you. Vicky jumps in on a lot of our lives from Instagram. So let's move on from the Bell. So first pick of the night is going to be the Bell Qualifier DLX with MIPS. Great lid if you are looking for a helmet under $300. Next up, come on producer Chase, this is live <laughs> baby. Take that helmet out of my hand. Um, the next up, you want to say it? I, it's one of my favorite helmets out there, especially from a style perspective. It's the Icon Airflight helmet. Uh, the Airflight might be one of oh. the most prestigious helmets when it comes to graphics out there. Ooh, which prestigious. I think prestigious, which grabs Ooh. a lot of people's attention. But I'm slowly revealing my graphic. Mm. I do, I do really dig that graphic. That is so loud. Yeah, I got the Day Tripper here is the name of this one. Gold with the uh, the included gold shield. And honestly, I think that might be what Icon has the best quality of all the brands uh, that are available out there is the style. I mean, you can wear this helmet, you can get it in you know white with a full black shield, make it look like it belongs on a cruiser. You can get something wacky and wild to stand out at the next bike night. I think they do graphics probably the best out of any brand out there. So if you remember the video on this, my personal Icon Air Flight is done in the inky graphic, which mm -hmm. is going away. It is no more. Um, but this is the quarter flash. We like the fact that the Icon Air Flight comes in with graphics that are under $300. You can get the loud, the obnoxious, the crazy. This is also a really popular pick because you can fully customize these. So you can see the shields on these are color matched. You can change the spoiler color. You can change the shield color. So if you are somebody that wants to take an already pretty unique and loud graphic, and customize a little bit to your to your taste, this is one to consider. Yeah, one thing I'd actually point out is like, and I only notice this as I'm looking at it really close, is this nice like gradient pattern all the way back, and then it gets, um, you know, it gets some kind of glitter built into the graphic in the back, which is really cool. It's not really just about the graphics when we really dig the Airflight. I mean, this for a couple of years was the most popular helmet out there on the market uh, in just the Airflight in general, just because you can make it so customizable, but it really was different. I mean, it, they came out with what their modern take on a, uh, like a, a bubble shield from the 70s. This was Icon's like modern take on that. And I think the overall style just spoke to a lot of modern riders out there. Yeah, so we have some questions coming in. Um, we have Mad Mac who says, isn't Icon for narrow heads though? So this is gonna, most of the helmets that we're fe featuring today are all a variation. Actually, all the helmets that we're featuring today are a variation on an intermediate oval mm -hmm. fit. So great question. We do have a video that's called how to size and buy a motorcycle helmet if you've never used it before. A um, little bit longer front to back, a little bit narrower down the side of the head, and this is going to be one that is definitely more of an intermediate oval, um, not just for long oval heads. So yeah. if that's something that you're worried about, um, this is one that will work for you. Of all the ones that we have out there, I'd probably say this is closer in the intermediate uh, oval range to longer oval, which helps it fit a lot more people in the U.S. market. Um, but when it comes down to the internal padding, I think Icon did a great job of making it fit for a lot of different head shapes. So Pat had mentioned the face shield earlier. One of my dislikes for this, mm -hmm. I like to ride with the face shield up. Because of the size of the face shield, it is not necessarily a helmet that works great if you like to ride with the face shield up. Yeah, I, I personally have ridden in this helmet for uh, hours and hours. Um, and I like to crack my shield, especially in traffic or if I'm just going at lower speeds, I like to crack it. And that's when you get probably one of the biggest distortions in the game of the shield going out. So you either got to go fully up or fully closed just to make sure that it's not right in your eye line. Um, that would be an easy nitpick for me when it comes down to these. So this is another one that is DOT and ECE 2205 rated. Um, we're not going to get into the differences with ECE ratings, but the newest ECE rating is 2206. You're going to see the latter half of the helmets that we're discussing are going to have the newest of the ECE ratings. 
All of that information will be on the Helmets product page as well. We also have Common Tread articles mm -hmm. over on the Common Tread blog on RevZilla.com, um, which walks you through the difference in Snell and ECE ratings if that is something that you are not familiar with. Yeah. And just because they come with awesome uh, shields that you might not be able to tell, I did pull it down on here. They do come with the drop-down sun visor. For those of you riding into the sun, I know I commute into the sun on the way to work, into the sun on the way home, so I like to drop that down as, as much as I possibly can. So, great question. Uh, we have a comment question coming in about the weight. In a medium, uh, depending on the graphic with mm -hmm. the icon, 3 pounds, 10 ounces to 3 pounds, 12 ounces in a medium. Yeah. Um, and if you go back to the bell qualifier that was three pounds eight ounces in a medium yeah. so that kind of gives you a little variation on what the weight is on yeah i think this might be the heaviest one that we have for today out there but it, just the amount of paint that they're putting on there the clear coats the accessories that they can add on the weight does vary probably the most drastic out of all the brands that we sell a uh, question about any of those in the purple helmeted oh, i'm not reading that i almost fell for that i'm not doing it you made our you made our uh, our editor laugh though so uh, almost got me there, Paul G. Uh, but this is live, and this is a family-friendly live here on Revzilla. Oh, you sly son of a gun! All right, so we caught up on the weightings on the, the weights on these. Carlos Lopez, this is 2205. Mm -hmm. The bell and the and the the icon that we've discussed so far are are currently 2205. The I, or the uh, air flight, I would expect, is probably going to be updated before we see 2206. Yeah, and I, even as I'm looking at it right now, like some of the, the Icon air flight was 2205, but they were starting to roll some of these out with the newer graphics. Since they update graphics probably more than any other brand, this one's already 2206 on the oh. latest graphic on the back. So it's, it depends on which one you're going with, if it's an older model or a newer, because Icon oh, yeah. does sell in Europe, so they do have to make it. Mine's 2206 as well. There so you go. we just learned something together, Internet. The newest of the air flights have been updated to EC 2206. I would say stop the presses, but we're live. We can't do that. No. We can't back the tape up and do it again. So we have gotten through two of our five picks for best motorcycle helmets under $300. The third is probably the newest of the bunch. This is the Sedici Strata 3. Um, this was just released officially. Last week, we've had a few that were teased out earlier, um, but this is the update to the very popular Strata 1. Uh, Strata 2, actually. Strata so, 2, yeah, sorry. So Strata bad. 2, no, no. So I got so excited with the Strata 3. And it's, it's funny because uh, we, we joke about it around here that the Strata 2 might be one of the most popular helmets that we've seen in probably the past decade, and it's only been out for three or four years. So this is a fresh update to meet that 2206. But I, I always look at it on social media. If you ever look at anybody out there that's out riding, producing content or anything, they're actually usually using the Strata 2. So I think everybody's going to be really impressed with where the Strata 3 has gone for a minimal price increase. So I think it was $20 north, $20 yeah. or $30 north. But um, you're getting a lot of features for that, which I'll let Spurgeon talk to. No, I was going to say, if you watch the review that we did on this, what I liked about this was because the Strata 2 was so popular, they didn't just do a ground-up redesign. Um, you know, I talked about in the video, but they really focused on refinement. So they looked at little things that were wrong. You know, very, very much attention to detail. The little um, mounting point where the face shield comes down to had a tendency to fail on the, uh, on the Strata 2 because it was a metal latch, but on a plastic kind of a base. So they've updated that. It's on a full metal latch. They made the helmet a little bit more aggressive. This is probably one of the most aggressive fit helmets that we're going to show today. From a cheek pad standpoint, this is probably the one that has the most aggressive race fit to it. Yeah, and, and speaking of fit, when you get to the top liner, I do love that they kept the feature where you can pull the, the uh, foam out. You got about five millimeters of foam at the forehead, at the temples that you can remove, just in case you need to update the fit at all. But they did add a full shell size into the mix. So it went from three shells to four shells, and you are getting the ECE 2206. And then there's going to be, of course, as always, a Primo version, which is Snell uh, rated without the drop down internal sun visor. So of all the helmets that we're talking about today, the Strata 3 is going to be the one that is available in either an ECE safety rating or a Snell safety rating. What I like about Sedici is they, they don't just force you to take ECE or Snell. You get to choose between the both. Um, coming in around the $280 price point, it's, it's not going to, you know, you're not going to pay more for one or the other. The only thing that I will say for a negative is my favorite pick was, uh, from a graphic standpoint, is the Animale graphic, and this is the gray version, it is over $300. So technically, this graphic is around $320, but what I will say is you get two face shields if you go with the graphic. You so the, you broke the one rule. 
that we had for this, which is under $300. I get it. I mean, that's a Jimbo Phillips uh, graphic. I think it might be the, my favorite feature about it. I'm a Santa Cruz skate uh, fan, so I love that they got in touch with Jimbo and had him do the graphics, but he did break the rule a little bit. Hang on. Oh, we're going to keep going. We, we're doing this live, and the producer's allowed to all of a sudden poke different things at us and, and, and ask us questions. But I would say that if you want to go the extra 20 bucks, you can go with the graphic. I really like what they've done with the graphics. I like the fact that you get two face shields. But Pat's right. The rules were best helmets under $300. So if that's the case, you got to be looking at yeah. his matte blue finish over here. I do love the blue finish. And I'll let that slide because I do love the Animal. And I think they did one other graphic with Jimbo Phillips and the Squidly. But I'm even looking at the comments on here. And uh, Mad Mac is at it again. He says, I have a friend with the Strata. And they say it's awesome. I can almost guarantee someone you know out there riding has the Strata 2 or might even already have the Strata 3. Ask them what they think about it. I think for the dollar for helmet that you get out of it, it's a fantastic option. So I would say that a couple notes here. If you want the Snell version, the Strata Primo, mm -hmm. um, that is going to be live around the middle of April. So if you're watching this as we're doing it live, uh, the ECE version is what we have on the table. This is ECE 2206, and this is the one that you can currently get. Like I said, my, my real nitpicks here are just the fact that the helmet graphics do push over. There is going to be a MIPS version, but you're going to have to spend over $300 for that as well. Would have been nice to have uh, a MIPS version around that, that $300 price point. Yeah, and it's, I think that technology, you're also paying to license it from MIPS and use that, but it already meets the 2206, so I think that is, uh, that's something that does factor in rotational impact to a certain degree. Uh, just a shout out to Jay Maxi picking up a Honda Monkey this weekend, could use a suitable helmet. Yeah. Pretty much any of the helmets that we're discussing today for you are going to be suitable awesome for bike, by a the Monkey. Way. Awesome bike. Yeah. Uh, my friend has a Strata, says it's awesome. Um, getting a little microphone static, so this is coming in live. Uh, we're going to move on to the next helmet whilst we, uh, while we take a quick little step off for moi. Pat, why don't you give the audience an explanation? Yeah, yeah, I'll let Mike or, um, uh, Spurgeon fix his mic. And I'm actually going to curious what graphic you chose, which is an all white, which is, I think, exactly what I chose as well. So the Scorpion FX is the, uh, the pick for the next one under $300 coming. Honestly, this might be my favorite style-wise in the entire bunch, just because it reminds me of the old Stig helmet. So if you remember from uh, Top Gear or anything like that, I think we've seen other brands out there like Rurock and a couple other brands do it very well and build an entire franchise out of it. Scorpion's throwing their hat in the ring, and I think they did a great job of styling it. At 250 bucks, I believe, let me pull up my notes right here. At 250 bucks, you're coming in with two shells, fiberglass, and three pounds, six ounces in a size medium. But since Scorpion sells in Europe too, it is ECE 2206 rated. So I really dig it. I think it might be one of my favorite style looking helmets that we've had on the table so far. I'm back. Outside of the I'm Icon back. Air Flight. I don't know if my microphone has been officially fixed, but they made me do this thing where I wave my hands in the air like the inflatable wacky hand guy and, uh, and they adjusted some things. So hopefully to all of you out there that have been talking about the static coming in in the comment section, uh, hopefully that has fixed the, uh, the problem. What I like about this one is that if you're looking at Scorpion's line of the Covert, this is the one that gives you full face protection. So there's a variety mm -hmm. of different ones you can pick from. I like the full face protection on this. Because I was getting my microphone fixed, did we talk about the dislikes on this yet? No, no dislikes yet, but I, I do want to note that, that like if, if this style is for you, but maybe you want a three quarter, you can pop off that chin vent or that chin bar and kind of pull it away and make a three quarter element. Covert, the covert line from Scorpion does have the covert, uh, the covert X, the FX. Like there are a couple different options out there. So take a look at it. But again, full face protection and full face helmet is really the safest way to go, especially in this price point. You want to make sure that you're protecting your entire face in the event of an accident. So backing up for a second. We failed to mention the weight of the Strata 3. Strata 3, three pounds, five ounces for the ECE version. We haven't gotten the final versions of the Snell safety rated ones yet. So the jury is still out as to exactly what those are gonna tip the scale at. The Scorpion comes in at, where are my notes here? Three pounds, six, six ounce. ounces yeah. in a medium. Pat has mentioned the style. Pat has mentioned uh, full face protection. I like the fact that you have cheek pads that are designed to be used with glasses. I like to wear sunglasses whilst I ride my motorcycle. If I had to pick a nitpick, I would say out of all the ones that we're looking at today, like, I was gonna say 
the it doesn't have the quick. That's what I was trying to say. It was the mm -hmm. quick release. Yeah, it's on more the, of a screw system on the side. Yeah. I mean, you can just pull it out uh, on that side. But I even say what you just demonstrated. There's no detents really to the shield that are going to hold at any amount yeah. of speed. So typically, I, again, I run a little bit hotter. So if I'm riding down the road or in a little bit of traffic, I like to crack the shield a little bit. And maybe I'm wearing glasses or a drop down underneath there. But anything without any detents, as soon as you get 10 miles per hour faster or anything like that, they usually just slam shut. So I would have liked to seen that from Scorpion. But again, I think for the style and especially the price point, uh, it's hard to argue with this helmet. So everything that we've seen so far, that we've talked about so far, has had at least three shell sizes. The Strata 3 has uh, four shell sizes, and this one only has two shell sizes. So one of the things that I don't like about this is if you're somebody using it in the smallest of the sizes, like an extra small, you're gonna have a bigger shell. So if you are a smaller head uh, rider out there, a smaller headed rider out there, um, this might not be the right pick for you just from a size standpoint. It might look a little bit big and bulbous compared to some of the other picks we've discussed today. Yeah, and a lot of the comments coming through are, are talking about how it does look like the Stig helmet or more of an auto racing helmet. And I think a lot of people dig that. I mean, the auto racing community is massive compared to the motorcycle community. Um, so I think it's something a lot of people appreciate. So a, a question coming in from Nathan around, I wonder how good Scorpions are for the price. Um, looks like they're not bad. Scorpion, I think, is one of the best bang for buck options across the board, whether you're looking at their most premium race helmets or you're looking at some of the more affordable options. The 420, is it the R420, the XO R420? Yeah, the R420 was always in our, our best helmets of the year because it was $150 yeah. for Snell. I know they're getting ready to update it and we're curious to see what the next one brings, but I mean, they, they bring affordability. They even have a MotoGP level helmet at the $400 price point in yeah. the R1 Air. So it's like they, they bring a tremendous amount of value. a bunch of extras. So yeah. yeah, for those of you out there that have never tried a Scorpion, I've used a few different ones now, and I think it's oftentimes a recommendation for people that want a premium style helmet, but with a little more budget friendly uh, price point in mind. Yeah, yeah, and again, at 250 bucks, I, I, it's hard to argue that this isn't my favorite, more V-twin style, cruiser style looking helmet out there, and the graphics, it comes with the dark smoke right out of the box, so yeah. There you go. So we are now cooking right through this, and I will say this is fun. I, I, this is this is going a little bit faster than I was expecting. I didn't expect to get to the the final pick so quickly. So let's bring it on in the bags. Again, keep. Uh, oh, we have a comment coming in from Jay Maxi. Similar looking. Okay, we already hit that. Yep. Uh, thoughts on airflow with all these helmets? If you had to pick before we reveal the final pick, best airflow for all the helmets we've talked about today. Best airflow. Um... It's hard to argue with the air flight. It has that, that cutaway in the dead center of like, I know yours had the special, yep. the special design to the actual shield and that cutaway does allow a ton of air to flow through. I'd say probably that or the Strata 3. Okay, so there you have it. Um, the pick for the final one on the table is going to be probably some of the highest end race graphics that you're gonna see. <laughs> so this is, oh, we picked different ones, but we both picked, we we picked, both picked Rossi graphics. We both picked Rossi graphics. I was curious about that, what you were gonna go with. Yeah, so, um, I think what we both like about this is that if you're looking at the AGV K1S, this feels like you're buying the big brother or the big sister. Um, they've managed to do a great job of bringing their high-end quality race feel of something like the Pista down to an affordable helmet that is very much sub $300. Yeah, and this is the new K1S. Uh, the S version was the new uh, 2206 version that uh, AGV came out with, but I completely agree. It's funny that you went with the Rossi. We both grew up in the Rossi era of MotoGP, so he has some of the best graphics out there, something AGV is clinging onto uh, moving forward, and for good reason. I mean, his, some of his graphics have, are iconic, Rossi. but you okay. don't have to spend $1,300 to get the Pista, which is what he actually wears, and his graphics come on. They do put it on the sub $300 price point helmet, which I really do enjoy, because I have, I'll admit, I have quite a few of these that I've ridden in, and I bought simply for the graphic, wore them for a season or two, and then hung them up on my wall. Pat likes to hang things on his wall. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say one of the things I like about this is the, the, the shield on this is one of the, the nicest quick release systems that we, that we see. This is on some of their, some of their other helmets. Um, and then from an aerodynamic standpoint, this goes through the same testing as their full on race graphics or their full on race helmets. Uh, one of the questions that we saw coming through in the comment section on this is which of the helmets that we talked about today is the quietest? Uh, that's a question that we get a ton. Uh, the quietest helmet is whichever helmet you wear with earplugs. 
it's the easiest way. There's so many factors that brands, subjective. yeah, the brands can't factor in your arm length, your lean angle, where you sit on it, the aerodynamics coming around your bike, so not many brands touch that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, Shoebirth is the only one that actually puts a decibel rating, and even if you read into that information, there's an asterisk next to it that says, on our bike, at our speed, in our wind tunnel. So again, it's super subjective. The easiest thing to do is take $10, run to your local pharmacy, and buy a box of earplugs. It's what professional riders do. It's the easiest way to save your ears on the We talked run. about this, I think, in our live test. I like the, the yeah. pink ones, the silky pink ones. They're yeah. comfortable. I go ears. with whatever my wife uses to stop my snoring noises. So <laughs> I just steal some of those. But again, that's the easiest way to solve the problem. Pick a helmet based on what you can afford, what has the best features you're looking for. Quiet is going to be something that, even if you ride six different helmets on your bike, they could all sound slightly different. And then if you hop on another bike, it's going to sound completely different from that test as well. There are brands out there that attempt to do tests, but again, there's so many variables that, you, that we can't factor in, so just wear earplugs. It'll, it'll save you in the long run. So a bunch of comments coming in, so let's, let's jump over to the comments section here for a second, because I think this is going to help us wrap up the, the video quite nicely. Um, so uh, damn, two sizes, narrow window, that is true for the Scorpion, mm -hmm. and it's true for the K1S. So these are, the last two that we've had up here are only available in two different shell sizes, so just keep that in mind. Um, Another comment here about AGV is probably the one that looks the most like an expensive helmet. Mm -hmm. You know, I would agree with that. Uh, one of my nitpicks that I failed to mention while talking about the Icon helmet is that at some points the graphics on them tend to feel a bit cheap, like it's just kind of plasticky. With the AGV, it doesn't have that same feel. This definitely has more of a feel of a premium helmet when you're when you're looking at it. Yeah, and even the aggressive nature, we call it the hawk's bill, where if you look at the base of the helmet, how it's really cut out for the full tuck riding position. I mean, those, those are things you typically see up in the aerodynamic helmets, and, you know, north, uh, most MotoGP helmets are eight, nine, a thousand dollars. So you get that aggressive look, the aggressive spoiler, all for what I'd consider more of an entry level price point. And we talked about something that you know, was a dislike for us for the Strata 3 was that the graphics get you over $300. The graphics for these are still sub $300. I think it's like $299, but we are playing by the rules and yeah. we're not including sales tax. Yeah, yeah, and I, again, if I can get a valet graphic for, I mean, a Rossi graphic for that price point, I'm still gonna buy it. And again, I have a huge helmet wall of graphics that I've collected over the years, and there's at least four or five different uh, Rossi graphics on there. Three pounds, six ounces in a medium for the K1S. Um, the one thing that I will note, uh, and again, just kind of looking through the comments here, one of the one of the nitpicks that I have seen about this graphic, if I had to pick a dis, or about this helmet, if I had to pick a dislike, is that while it has a great wide field of vision, some folks are complaining that in a full tuck position, it's not enough uh, field of vision top to bottom. Yeah, so that's which, some of the comments we've seen. Yeah, which is very dependent on the rider. I mean, how how a helmet sits on Spurgeon's head versus how it sits on my head is going to be very different. Your hair can factor into that, but. Um, I know with ECE 2206, they did mandate that the eyes sit almost dead center on your average head shape. They're supposed to sit dead center to help alleviate that. But again, if you're getting into a full tuck, you are getting into a very aggressive riding position. Things do change. Even if your chin's hitting the, uh, the tank or laying on the tank, that can push it up. There's a lot of different variables that come into play. Our racer 300ZX, you know what I'm talking about, making a comment in there about the field of vision. Um, so again, a, a little bit subjective, but that is probably the most regular complaint that I have heard with this particular helmet. Um, There's a good one from, uh, from Little Saint in there uh, about prescription glasses. I know we get that all the time. It's like, is it good? Is it not good? I know Scorpion specifically puts a call out that it is good for pre uh, prescription glasses, but it really comes down to the stem of your glasses that go over your ear. If it's a thicker band, it's going to be tougher to go through anything, yeah. really. Um, sunglasses, I wear sunglasses almost every single pair of helmets. I know you do a lot, yeah. too. Um, a lot of them are going to be better for it, but it really depends on the prescription. But there are motorcycle companies out there. I, don't, I know we don't sell them, but there are brands out there that will get your prescription and put them into flexible uh, arms so that they can fit in helmets a little bit easier. Yeah, again, this is kind of where some of the subjectivity comes into play. I think there's a lot of people out there um, that have a hard time doing it. I could wear sunglasses with any of the helmets mm -hmm. that we featured today. Uh, and I don't have a problem with it, but of all the helmets we featured, I believe Scorpion is the only one that calls out that their helmet uh, cheek pads are compatible with glasses. Uh, question in here about pin lock. So for those of you that are just looking at this as your first video, maybe you're checking out your first helmet, pin lock is an insert that actually sits on the inside of the face shield. You can see these little pins over here. Mm -hmm. Pat did a great social video about how to install a pin lock lens. There are no helmets that we did today that include a pin lock in the box. I, I'm going to 99% sure agree with you. Most of them, and you can even see it, are, are pin lock, lock compatible. Ready. 
but you have to buy it for and extra the on the side. Um, they are one-time use, so again, you gotta, you gotta pack it in there if you're going to a dark smoke and you, and you wanna put it on that one, you have to put it on that side. But yeah, most of them at this price point won't include it, but they'll come with the option to add it in there. I think, I can only think, maybe the Air Flight is the only one that we showed today. That and, doesn't have. And the um, Scorpion might be the only two that don't have it ready for it right out of the box. Uh, but you can usually buy a shield after that. Yeah, so from a cost saving standpoint, um, if you are looking at the Bell, if you are looking at, well, the Bell with the Pro Tint. Did that the Pro Tint, uh, we just had one over here. I can, I. Grab that Pro Tint lens live. People. Yeah, I can say it's at least, it's at least pin lock. It's uh, pin lock ready. Pin yep. lock ready. No, no, it's not pin lock ready, but you are getting, not, those are the tabs not. for putting oh. it on there. But you are getting a transition shield, you know, out of the box. So you okay. can't really complain at that point. So great question. The two helmets that we have discussed today that are pin lock ready would be the Strata 3 and the AGV. Yeah. Now, again, they don't include the pin lock in the box, but you can go ahead and you can throw that on. Yeah, and you Great can add it question. to the Icon, you can add it to the Bell Qualifier. I believe you can add it to the Scorpion. It's a very odd shape of the uh, shield. I know that was one of your complaints about that helmet, is just the odd shape to it, but I believe they probably have one available for it. Okay, so in summation, any dislikes that you had for this one? I know I talk about the field of vision at all, uh, no, not for this one. Again, I, I think I'm seeing some comments in there that it'd be nice to see MIPS. I know we talked about the Bell Qualifier has MIPS. Yeah, it'd be nice to see it in here, but any helmet that's meeting 2206 is factoring in uh, rotational impact. They're just not using another brand name. So I'd love to see an AGV under 300 with, with MIPS included, uh, just for the added sale point too. All right, so that has going to, or that is rather going to wrap up our very first live video. This has been best of motorcycle helmets under $300. If you want to check out our full best of curated pages, everything from motorcycle locks to backpacks to helmets and everything in between, you can just go ahead. There should be a QR code up on your screen. You can just kind of just take your phone, open the camera, scan the QR code if you're watching this on your big television or computer monitor, and that'll take you over to the best of pages. And you can kind of look through all the information there. And if you want to see all of the helmets that we have discussed today, there is also a best motorcycle helmets under $300 page. That's going to give you all the helmets under $300. There should be a QR code for that, hopefully up on your screen right now. There will also be links for everything we talked about in the description of the video once we put it up. Yeah, and if you do have any other questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. I know we always reference that in our videos. They are all riders, happy to help you get set up for your next ride. But feel free, any questions you have about anything we saw today or any other helmets, everyone over there is more than happy to talk helmets, talk other gear, and help you out in making the best educated decision for your ride. I think that about does it. Unless you have anything else for the audience. No, I'm actually going to probably steal that helmet from you because I really dig that graphic. That was my graphic, Pat. You can't have it. I chose it, and it is mine. For all of you out there in TV land, from us here live at Revzilla, thanks for joining us. And enjoy the ride.